drink in the back of the car And I'm crying like a baby coming home from the bar Oh, I'm fine but I wasn't true I don't want to keep secrets just to keep you in the You should open them Oh I got my notebook upstairs Oh, hell No, I need it Now I gotta open them up. Into the unknown. And then just enough space for Jamie to fit. There's no hair on this side. I always do that. And welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and Final Girl being the last one to survive. Killing the bad guys. You know how I be. You just That's just how I do stuff. It's not a secret, I don't think, that Final Girl is my favorite game. And I have finally completed all of Series 1 and series two. I have played through all 10 sets and I am here to give you my rankings. Which ones do I prefer? What is my least favorite? What is my most favorite? And on top of that, it's not just about me today. No, no, no. I also put a survey out to our Discord because we have an entire Discord channel dedicated to Final Girl. So I put a survey out asking the Discord members to also rank their favorites. And I have those results as well. So that's what we're here for today. We are gonna go through all of them from number 10, my least favorite, least favorite, to number one, my most favorite, the bestest of the restest. So without further ado, let's get into this. Let's start from the bottom. Start from the bottom until we get here. Start from the bottom, and now we're here. So we're gonna start with number 10. Number 10, aka my least favorite set from both series, I feel like is probably going to come as no surprise. If you watch me play Final Girl on Friday nights on Twitch for Freaky Fridays, and if you have watched my Final Girl playthrough on the channel, you may know that I have a bit of an arch nemesis who I just can't seem to defeat. My number 10 slot goes to Slaughter at the Groves. Freaking Inkanyamba man. I can't beat him. He's too difficult. So here's the thing, and I need to say this up front. I don't dislike any of the sets. In fact, I love all of the sets because they all offer something different. What this one offers is a freaking challenge that just seems to be slightly impossible to win. Speaking from experience, I also find of all of the sets, this one... I don't know that this one has the most special rules, but to me it feels like this is the one where I miss so many things because there's just so much to think about within this set. So this set comes with two extra trackers, Killer Wrath and Divine Wrath. Divine Wrath has to do with the set, so with Sacred Groves, the location, and Killer Wrath has to do with it in Kenyamba. As an example with the Killer Wrath, you are just kind of like, Oh, you know, add add some horror, why not? Add some super duper kill moves, why not? Add extra movement, sure. Maybe he'll gain a heart back, why not? It's like the Inkanyamba does not die. And one thing about Final Girl that I think is my least favorite thing that happens in Final Girl, I should say, is when horror gets increased. I hate it because it means you lose dice and I like to roll dice. They don't call me the two star queen for nothing, folks, okay? But this just gets rid of some of your dice. The more horror goes up, the less dice you have to roll. So that is something that is unique with this set that just adds an extra challenge. And I think for me, I just, I don't know if it's because not only have I not won this one, but I have like lost so horribly almost every time that I've played. It's just, I don't know. I'm not really connected to the theme. It doesn't really bring me a ton of joy while I'm playing it. So it's my number 10. It also happens to be the Discord's number 10. So we are aligned. Moving on to number nine. My number nine is going to one of the sets from series two, and that 
is Into the Void. This is the set that features the Evil Morph on the USS Conrad, AKA this is essentially alien. That is not alien, but it is alien. I think the reason why this one comes in number nine for me is because I just, the theme is so not for me. Like, I don't really care about Alien. I think I would have resonated with this one more if it was based on, like, signs. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, those types of aliens, like, crop circles and stuff like that. But there's just something about this type of Alien that I'm like, mm, I don't really care. So there's a few cool things with this set. There's actually quite a lot of different mechanisms that are going on that stretch beyond the base game. So <clears throat> the Evo Morph or the Alien actually has like three growth stages and it is evolving through the game. So it starts off as this like little baby and then it's like a teenager and then it's like a full on super alien monster. And when that happens, so when it starts, it starts with just very little health. However, when it evolves, it gains like not only all of its health back, but it gains extra health and it's extra hard to kill. One cool thing about this map though, is that there are different rooms that require you to unlock them before you're able to enter. So it does add kind of like an extra layer of complication I guess to the set so this is definitely not a set actually neither of these first two that I talked about would be a set that I would start with but if you're looking for an extra challenge they're both really good I think the reason why this one falls so low for me is just the theme I'm just kind of like Meh. the discords number nine comes from series one and I was actually shocked to see this so low but it's carnage at the carnival with Geppetto my number eight one thing that you're going to know as I go through these is that theme is really really big for me keep that in mind as I make my ranking because I feel like this one might fall higher on some people's lists my number eight is panic at station 2891. Now this set is based off of The Thing, which I have never seen and I feel really bad about it, but that does mean that I just, I'm kind of like, eh, I, don't really, I'm, meh, I don't know, it's fine, I guess. The villain in this one is called The Organism. He's right here and he's super gross. So what you're trying to do in this set is figure out whether or not the special victims are actually victims or if they are in fact disgusting gross organisms such as this guy and you're doing that by going to a laboratory and doing a test on the victim or there's other ways that you can do the test to figure out whether or not they are exposed. Once you have found the exposed organisms then you have to kill the exposed organisms. It's a really really cool, the it is a cool theme, it's a cool set. The map itself is pretty neat. So you are in the Arctic, you've got outside zones. One thing that is really different about this one is that in order to save victims, you actually have to get them in a helicopter and fly them out. Really really neat and there's dogs in this one, which you love to see. Number eight on the discords list is Into the Void. So we're back to aliens. So apparently the Discord peeps, this one's not their favorite either. My number seven pick is actually one that surprised me that it fell here. It is from series one. And not only is this one my number seven, but it is also the Discord's number seven. And that is Haunting at Creech Manor with the Poltergeist. So the Poltergeist is the villain in this one. There she is being super creepy deepy. And essentially this one is you're in a haunted house. It's like babysitters are the, um, the victims or the final girls. And you are trying to get a little girl that you're babysitting out of the house um, with her like teddy bear thing. This is a really cool set though because this was kind of the first one that I played in series one where I was like, ooh, this is different. And basically there is like, different movement mechanics in this one in terms of like the killer because she's a ghost she can go through walls there's no like movement restrictions for her and there's ladders that you can climb down and you can go out a window and there's indoor outdoor and all of these things it is a really cool set it's really difficult I do love the theme but you know just in comparison to how much fun I've had with the other ones it just fell at number seven but 
this one is great if you are into the ghost theme if you ain't afraid of no ghost might i suggest the poltergeist number six is one for me that's already showed up on the discords list and that is carnage at the carnival i love this one i really do i've played this one on stream twice um, and I have defeated this one. And basically the villain in this one is Geppetto, the creepy puppet master. And he has these little puppet minions. So this set does come with minions, which is a really cool, I don't think any of the other ones that I've talked about so far have had minions, but it's a really cool feature where you're not just worried about the villain, creepy DB, creepo, coming after you, but also his little puppets. And on stream, we have deemed his puppets to be named Steve, Stringy, and I can't remember what the other one was called, but they all started with an S. Real creepy little things. And it's really cool because thematically, the puppets are attached to strings, so they can't go too far from Geppetto, but they are trying to also attack you and attack the victim, so it adds kind of like, you know, a little bit more of like, thought to where you're moving and all of that stuff. Set itself is set at the carnival, which I also think is just a really fun theme. It's really creepy, creepy puppets, all of that stuff. I think this one's really fun. And so that is my number six. The Discord's number six is Panic at Station 2891. So a little bit higher than mine, but still kind of mid-range for them. Now we're into the top five. This was really, really hard. My top three were easy, but between four and five, these could have honestly went either way. But my number five is going to be from series two, and that is a knock at the door, and this features the intruders. So this set is reminiscent of the strangers, or strangers, is that what it's called? Strangers? the movie with the, the Creepo Depot with the bag on his head. That's what this one is kind of based off of. And it's at Wingard Cottage and the bad guys are the intruders. Okay, so you don't just have one bad guy once again, you have multiple and they all activate at different times. So I really like that mechanism because, you know, you are having to worry about all of them and if you attack one of the intruders, they will become the active killer um, or, you know, if one of them moves or whatever. So they kind of like flip flop around of who is active. So if you're in one spot, suddenly you could be like, oh, I'm safe because the active killer is way over there. But boom, the one right next to you becomes active and he wants to kill you. I had so much fun with this one. It was a blast. I think that the theme is really cool. I've seen the movie that it kind of relates to. And so, I don't know, I just thought it was really, really fun. I like the multiple killers thing. I like how they activate at different times. This is a huge hit for me. Number five for the Discord members is from series one, and that is Frightmare on Maple Lane with Dr. Fright. So you'll obviously, I haven't talked about it, so you'll obviously hear about this one later, but that was their number five. My number four, and this was the one that I said could have went either way, but I do think that this one properly lives at number four, and that is Madness in the Dark with Ye old Ratchet Lady, okay? I love this theme. Like, I love this theme. So essentially in this one, you are at an asylum and the ratchet lady, <laughs> look at her, creepy as all heck, you know, she's just gone a little mad and she is coming for you. And she is, she's wild that one. So few different things in this one that I think is really cool. There are like special meeples that act almost as like, minions-ish and just different or possibly different types of victims um, and they're manic and so they are moving in different ways they panic all the time like they are manic they panic they move they're all over the place and so that's one thing that's different however what is really cool about this set is there is there are these pill tokens and the pills are kind of like scattered on the floor or you can find them in different ways. But if you collect enough pills of like either matching colors or whatever, then something happens. Like you can use them to do something and then there's like side effects that you get from these pills. And so there's like all of these different things. Now, one thing though 
with the Ratchet Lady, I beat this set so quickly. Like it was 40 minutes maybe and I had completely demolished. You know, it was a two star queen kind of night. What can I say? Um, but what I've heard with this set is that it can either go one way or the other and if you get lucky, you can win it pretty quickly and that is what happened to me. But for me, this theme was really cool. The pill system was really neat. I just, I loved it. I freaking love this one. Number four for the Discord is Once Upon a Full Moon, which is the werewolf, big bad wolf set. So obviously I will be talking about this one later. So we'll leave that there. My number three, so top three was difficult and I still don't actually fully know if these are all in the right order, but I'm just going with my gut, okay? My number three, in my opinion, is the OG. This is the Happy Trails Horror. This set I have played more than any other set. This is what is considered to be like the base set. There are no special rules. You are fighting Hans the Butcher. You are at a summer camp and people are like at Makeout Lane and they're doing all this stuff and things. And this is just the set that I feel like embodies Final Girl perfectly. Like if you are like, which set do I get? I would recommend this one, even though it doesn't have any of the fancy bells or whistles, because it's just so good. The theme is so classic horror movie trope. Like when I think of Final Girl as a horror movie trope, this is what I'm thinking of. I am thinking of the summer camp with the butcher guy in the pig mask going around killing teenagers and the girls who are fighting back. This is what I think of. I love this set. I honestly was close to almost putting this at number one because it's just also has a nostalgic factor to me, but I love it. Number three for the Discord is going to be a knock at the door. So they obviously are really into the strangers the movie just like i was um so that is the one that they picked for number three my number two my number two and my number one even right now i'm like do i have these in the right order am i about to flip them it's nice though because like realistically these two are just going to continuously probably go back and forth for me um and one is from series one and one is from series two and i'm just going to go with my gut and i am going to say that my number two is fright there on maple lane i had the best time playing this i played it for the first time on stream and what i love about this set is there is a bit of a different system where part of the game is played in your dreams while you are sleeping it's essentially like freddy krueger nightmare on elm street so it's in your dreams and the killer cannot kill you and cannot attack you when you're awake and you can't attack them when you're awake so you have to be able to go to sleep go into your dreams and fight them and I love that. Like, how cool is that? It's so thematic. It's so creepy. And the whole like sleeping versus dream, like whatever, love it. Um, so Dr. Fright is the bad guy. He is a creepo depot. And then you are on Maple Lane. And there's something very Canadian about that. So number two for the Discord is the classic Happy Trails Horror. I am not surprised that this one was so high. I think this one is probably high on a lot of people's list for the same reason that it's high on mine. I just assume. You would have guessed by now that my number one set is Once Upon a Full Moon, okay, with the Big Bad Wolf. Here's something that you need to know about me. I love werewolves. I always have. I always will. Teen Wolf is literally one of my favorite TV shows, unironically. I have seen like the MTV, MTV version of Teen Wolf, Styles for Life, okay? I have seen the entire series at least seven or eight times and I will just kind of go back and rewatch it all the time. I love this theme. I also love the fact that not only is it a werewolf, but it's also playing off of like Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf. And then we also have Gretel. Like, it's just a storybook. It's like a fantasy, like, I don't know. I love it. I love it. I loved this set. So you are in storybook 
woods. I love it. And there's not like many special rules in this one. There is a movement rule with a bridge, but I'm pretty sure that that's kind of the only like special thing. So this is almost like the classic set of series two, kind of the one to get start with in series two, but I, I love it. I love this one so much. So that is my number one. Ow. That was a word. And that means that the Discord's number one is Madness in the Dark with the Ratchet Lady. Not surprised. This set is super duper fun. I actually was a little bit surprised that it came in at number one, but honestly, it's so good. So you can't knock them, okay? Those are the 10 sets from Final Girl, my ranking of them, the Discord's ranking of them. If you love Final Girl and you wanna come chat about it, join the Discord because we have a whole channel about it. You can watch almost all of these being played on my video on demands on our second channel, Foster the Meeple Rewind from my Friday night streams of them. I'm sure some people are wondering, do I prefer series one to series two? It's really hard to say. In my top five, I have three from series two and two from series one. So I guess that means that I prefer series two, but honestly, I don't know. Like if you're wondering which set to get, my best piece of advice is go for whichever theme speaks to you the most. Or if you're just starting out, you want something that's a bit easier to ease yourself into, I would pick one of these two. Okay, because the rule sets on these ones are just slightly easier to get into. So go with the theme that you love and have a freaking blast because that's what I do when I play. Now that we all know which my two favorite ones are from each series, if you would be interested in seeing a playthrough of these two in particular, let me know down below in the comments because I think that I might like to do that, like a fully edited playthrough and not just a live playthrough. So if you're interested, you let me know. Anyways, I would love to know down below which is your favorite set. Please tell me. If you would like me to do any other type of final girl rankings, I'd be happy to do that. Maybe by location, by killer, by final girl themselves, because the final girls are all different. So um, I'd be happy to do any of those. Let me know down below what you'd like to see. But that is everything that I have for today. So if you are interested in buying board games like Final Girl, you should first start by looking at your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is the Boardroom Game Cafe. You can also find all of the sets on Van Ryder Games um, on their website. So feel free to check them out there. And there's a lot that are kind of like popping up along second hand markets right now. So yeah, you can find these anywhere. If you like snacks, check out Munch Pack. We have a code for $5 off. But that is everything that I have for you today. So thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Hope to see you again soon. And now we say, Goodbye and happy haunting and happy final girling and happy dice rolling, etc. And yes, I have everything. I went all in. Yes, I have the vehicles, etc. I have everything. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I am like, weird spot on the table. Anyways. Oh. Is that on? Yes, that's on. Like we are not, are we online with stuff? Not really. Pants are falling down. Looking like a fool with your pants on the ground. 